Welcome, welcome everyone to episode 48 of Chess Whiz TV. Today is August 5th, 2014, and yes, it's like the first time in weeks I've said all that without looking at the clock to see what day it is. Because my clock's right down here. If you go look at previous episodes, you'll say you'll see it every moment just before I say what day it is. I go like this, and I'm like, oh, it's such and such day. But I memorized the day. Kudos to me. Today is Funday Monday. If you think it's Tuesday, you're wrong. It's Funday Monday. We are doing pawn storms today. Now, it's a little bit restrictive, but you're going to see some kind of normal chess because the rules were castle on the opposite side of the board and pawn storm the guy in the face. It turns out that's actually a good strategy in a lot of games of chess. For example, in the Sicilian Dragon, you could play your Yugoslav attack, castle queen side, pawn storm him on the king side. That's completely, completely normal. So we might see something normal. Or in the French defense, exchange variation, white could castle queen side or even black could, and they could castle opposite sides and pawn storm. But not necessarily every position is this good for. Most games of chess you castle on the same side. He goes king side, you go king side. Most people castle king side. But so this is going to be interesting. We're going to see a lot of the chess with TV players going queen side because that's like the second best place to castle. And then we'll see how it goes from there. We'll see about that. I cannot wait. I love to see good players making bad moves because of me. All right, you ready to start? Unfortunately, I think the view is going to come in looking funny. Let's see how it looks. Yep, looking funny. This is Tipo's fault. He designed this website and he made it so that the board position is a little bit different when you are reviewing a game than it is when you're playing a game. So if you're watching Tipo, this is your fault. And I actually sent him a message about this, and he didn't reply because a million people send him messages all the time. So actually, I'm not very important in his book. Have you seen his book? It's like that thick, and I'm just one of the little words on one of the pages, so I'm not that important. Okay, so this is a game played by Anonymous against Anonymous on an Anonymous day, but we do know it was a game of chess. What do you think of this move? I think he invented it. This move was invented by Anonymous on an Anonymous day. So, so far so good. This could be the first e4, because we don't know how long ago this was played. The guy could have been like, oh yes, I remember my game in 1142 AD. It was so good, I'll send it in to Funday Monday. And then just puts it in my chest and sends it to me. I don't really know where this came from. Ooh, the Scandinavian defense. So, is this a good opening for casting queenside? For white? I'd like to see a show of hands. I am not seeing any hands. Wait, is my machine working? Click, 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 click. <gasps> the more I click, the less I see hands. Maybe it's not a good opening for castling queenside. Let's find out what white thinks about that. Knight c3 is good. Queen d8. That's like the second most popular move. The most popular is queen a5. Um, and the second most popular is queen d8. So this does look like, wow, I'm so dumb. I've done nothing except lose my pawn. But it's actually okay opening for black. Because he has to move second. But I would rather be white here. Seriously, rather be white. Knight f6, black actually moved something. Fantastic work, black. Now what happens? Do you think queen takes d4 is good here, by the way, guys? Black can now win a free pawn. No, this is a beginner's mistake. And I've done it about... 15 times I've taken a pawn that looks free and then something moves out of the way and checks me at the same time. It happens a lot in the French defense actually because I play the French. So I move this pawn one square and this pawn two square and then I move my queen here and then I take this thing and then this bishop which is protecting me, boom, out here check and then he eats my queen for lunch. This could happen here too. So you guys got to be real careful about d4 pawns with bishop d3s blocking because the bishop d3s move out with check. And if you've castled, you're still not safe because bishop takes h7 happens over and over until you learn and then you can do it to your opponent so black's smart enough to not do that unfortunately black did block in his bishop so he may have wanted to bring that out first knight f3 bishop d6 bishop g5 so this isn't too good for black i mean this bishop's blocked in this bishop's not doing anything about the pin white's got way more peace activity way more space because he's got a fourth rank pawn and his opponent only a third rank pawn so i really like white's position castle Okay, now a normal chess player here would also castle as white. He'd say, okay, I'll just castle too, but not normal today. Today is fun day crazy, Tuesday, Monday. And so we castle queenside! All right, so what do you guys think? Is this going to be an easy win for white? The chat is like dead right now. I'm going to type in chat here. Hi. 
can you hear me? Question mark. Okay, because I maybe I'm just talking in an empty room because it kind of feels like I'm talking in an empty room. Let's see how white checkmates the guy in the face. Ready? H4. This is the way to play. You want your pawns moving. So this is a good. Now this is a good pawn storm. This game got computer analysis on it, which is why you see these orange squares. So the computer is actually saying, why did you play knight b6? I see a better move. Move whatever's here in this orange square over to this orange square. Oh, and I actually like black playing b5, b4, and just trying to mess white up as fast as possible on the queen side. So after b4, the knight has to move, and then you could take a2 if your queen were out here, so that would be pretty nice. But with knight b6, everything's really slowed down, because this pawn on b7 is blocked, so you can only roll with one pawn. This bishop is really, really blocked. So, guys, make sure both of your bishops are doing something, because this bishop is not doing something. Ah, computer says this was a mistake as well. One moment, please. I've got a button here that I'm going to click. I wonder what happens when I disappear. You want to see? Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm back. And my face is gone. Where's my button? Boom! I can control whether my face is gone or not. Can you guys do that? I mean, can you get up in the morning and be like, hey, today's no face day. You cannot. Only I. So people in chat say, yes, yes, hey, yes, yes. And then I get the important message. We're mesmerized by the deep analysis. Thank you very much. Okay, so rook dg1. Now, unfortunately, the computer says h5 is better. And I would have preferred h5 because that'd be more pawns, more faster for more checkmates now. But rook g1 is cool because you know he's going to use his g pawn also that's going to be exciting okay the knight maneuver the problem with it is it's too slow in a normal game of chess you can maneuver your knight but not on fun day monday because if you've castled on the opposite side of the board you need to attack before he attacks which basically means on his turn you need to be attacking him and so two knight moves is not fast enough he needs to be rolling these pawns and he's gonna pay for it g4 so white's two moves ahead count him oh that's four two moves ahead of the, the black here in the attack, because he's already got both of his pawns rolled down. And what happens? h5, h6, take that pawn, promote to a queen by taking the rook. You know it's going to happen. It's going to be painful. h6, kick that bishop away. And once again, computer says, why didn't you move from this orange square to this orange square? Would have been great. Yeah, it would have been, because this is going to hurt. Check it out. Oh, I love sacrifices. Last episode was three checks chess, where... If you check the guy three times, you instantly win. That was a good game for sacrifices, because you could just throw away a knight to check him, and it was like, yes, a good trade. Throw away a queen for two checks. That was like, maybe, maybe. Definitely had an interesting game there where, where someone traded a queen for two checks. <laughs> But this is just like three checks, Jess. If I check you three times, you're about to be checkmated. Can black even safely recapture here? Let's do a little analysis. Black takes that bishop. Queen. Queen should not be able to move this far. It's OP to h6. Okay. No immediate threats, but you know knight g5 could come or pawn g5 could come. Or, yeah, pawn g5 probably, because if that knight moves, then queen h7 is checkmate, because this bishop is still here. Oh, this is going to hurt. I really like this sacrifice. Bishop takes h6. I hope we get to see more bishop takes h6 today, because that's going to be fun. Oh, oh, uh oh, took the bishop. And, oh, trading knights. Let's rewind a little bit. Uh, I like queen takes h6. Oh, I see the idea. Oh, I think oh, if you trade knights, he'll definitely want to take with his knight. And then when I take on h6, I'm threatening checkmate. No, he might not take with a knight. He might take with this pawn, opening up his bishop. So why would that be useful? Yep, he did. That was not useful. Oh, now that's funny because the computer delivers orange squares for us again and says why the best move was to use this orange squared piece and move there. Interesting. Interesting. Let's go back a little bit and analyze. Take, take, knight takes d5. Computer like knight e5, that's interesting. Take, so the computer, let's look at this other line where the knight takes. I'm interesting to see, interested, I'm so interesting to see why this was better for black because, oh, well black, white doesn't just take on h6? Take on h6, man, destroy him. Why aren't you taking on h6? What's wrong with queen takes h6? Is it f5 stopping everything? I don't know. G5 this is hypothetical here, guys. Didn't actually happen. 
boring. C4. What about the checkmate? Okay. Okay. Is the checkmate coming? Yeah, your bishop's gone. Oh, it's still looking pretty. It's, why are you just attacking bishops when you could be checkmating kings? Rook takes g6 check. Queen h6. Ah. Oh, no. Now you're pinned. And that's the end of the analysis. Thanks, computer, for getting me into a crazy position and then saying, I'm done. I'm, I'm done analyzing, guys. Enjoy your new position. Because black's in check and white's queen is pinned to his king. Great. Okay, we're going to go back to the main game. Thanks, computer. Queen takes h6. This is the main game. Our light chess, chess was TV, chess, chess, chess player. Played queen takes h6 to make it interesting. So what are the threats here? Well, g5 is kind of dangerous looking. Knight g5 is kind of dangerous looking. I think those are the main threats. Even queen g5, forcing the king over here, is kind of dangerous looking. But probably not the most biggest, largest danger there is. Ooh. Computer doesn't like this either. We're seeing a lot of orange squares today. Knight takes g4. Great idea. That stopped g5. There is a downside. You guys see the downside? Computer says blunder. Mate in one. Checkmate is now unavoidable. The best move was rook e8. Ouch. Lovely. Lovely game. That's like a textbook win. All you have to do is castle on the other side of the board, capture a pawn with your bishop that's guarded, and then checkmate him. It's like a three-step thing to do. That was great. I'm so glad I watched that game. Now what happens? Uh, yes, we'll go on to the next game. I'm so glad you guys waited for that because here we go. Game two, anonymous versus anonymous, round two. People don't want me to know their identities, but I actually know who this anonymous is because there's only one anonymous in the world who would send games to ChessWiz. The rest of the anonymouses have no idea who I am. Just like most humans in the universe, they have no idea who I am. Let me drink a little more water here. Okay, so that was, what opening was that? That was a center counter. Let's look at castling opposite sides in a different, in a different opening. Perfect word. E4, C5. Ah, the Sicilian defense. Now we know in the Yugoslav attack, which is where um, black Fianchetto says bishop here to g7, and then white castles and throws his bishop down here to h6 to trade those bishops. That could be a great attack. But is that going to happen? Uh... Probably not. I mean, bishop c4, that, that's called the Bowlder attack. Thank you, computer, for telling me that. d6, knight f3, knight f6. You've got to play d4 here, white, otherwise it's weird. Oh, brilliant move! Okay, so we've seen too many knight g5s. I mean, we've seen two out of two games. I'm rewinding to the first game. Do you see this move? Wait, there's no knight g5 in here. Knight g5 was never played, congratulations, but it was played in this game way too early. We're going to see a theme, I have a feeling, of way too early knight g5s. This is a bad move, guys, I think. Oh, but look at this. Hmm, how will he defend that? That's, oh, what? Who invented this opening? This is not a real opening. Okay, did you get your time to analyze this? Yep, there's a simple way to defend. And I'm back! The simple way is e6. And white has wasted his time with knight g5. Totally wasted his time. Why didn't you just play h6 here, black? Blah, why are you moving your bishop? Because you could just play h6 and kick that knight away. Come on, do it. Come on, why are you not kicking that knight away? It's a little scary out there. I mean, it's kind of close to your king, so just kick the thing away. Come on starting to look like white thinks it's a Yugoslav. Look, he's bishop e3, queen d2, I'm sure of it. Kick the knight before it's too late. What? What? Oh, it's preemptive. He's going to attack my bishop, so I'll just move my bishop. He'll never play b5 now. I think this is a weird move, by the way, guys. I mean, it's okay if your bishop's attacked to move it, but just because your bishop's gonna be attacked, you don't have to move it. It's not that bad, because black is going to play b5. But... Yeah. Well, that was obvious and boring. Come on, what about h6? 
Come on. Oh, 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 castle queenside. I love it. So white just says, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm castling queenside and I'm rolling pawns in your face. This is much scarier than last game because these pawns over here are much further advanced than in the last game. Much further. Black has learned. Black has learned from the other player's game that he didn't see. H4, C4. Oh, closed up, closed up. Okay, this is looking much better for black. I think black plays a5 and b4, hits the knight. It's going to be a pretty good attack. Pretty strong. Why is this knight still out here? I can't believe it just is made its home here. It's just living out on g5. Like, ah, hi guys. Welcome to g5. I live here. Not. Knight g4. Are you really going to drive that knight away with your bishop? It's just going to get worse. Okay, going after this bishop's a good idea. If you can take the dark square bishop off the board, you can help defend a lot better. It's true. And it escapes. And the knight is now attacked. This was about 10 moves, 12 moves, too late. Let me count. Mm, 10 moves. Knight h3. Why h3? Uh, maybe he wants to play f3 and drive that knight away. One sec, I've got to do something you don't want to see or hear. That didn't take long. I'm faceless again. The faceless fiend has a face. And I'm back. Okay. How's this looking, guys? Who do you think's winning? I'm watching chat, and everyone's like, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. What do you want to do? That's what's happening. Nothing is happening. Well, I think White's winning because White is the chess was TV player who sent in the game, and why would he send in a game where he's losing? What? Do you really think Knight Back is going to defend? You need to be playing A5 and B4 right now. You need to be attacking now, and you're not. So these pawns are good, but they need to get better, and they need to get better soon because White's attack is kind of stirring the pot over here, and it's not going to be good. Does anything look familiar with this move right here? <laughs> It looks familiar to me. It looks to me like the same as last game. So let's take a quick look. Is it the same? Black recaptures. White can take with a queen. Um, this time this pawn's back here. This time two pieces are on e4. And there's just one defender. Yeah, good point, modern nerd. I really like bishop... Well, I don't know if I like bishop takes h4 here. Modern nerd tells me bishop takes h4. But that kind of opens up the king right to an open line of attack. So that's pretty scary, actually. After g3, sack this bishop. Now the rook could come in in a couple lines and really be scary. Here, the rook can't come in very quickly because the pawn has to advance a bunch more. Okay, so take, take. Is this very good? Hmm, is this any good? Hmm. F3, g4, maybe. I really like F3. I think f3 should have been played, because it supports the g4 pawn, which could then go g5 and, and help the attack. Okay, so this is black's shocking move. The shocking move is don't take it. Hmm. Well, that is a legal move. Trade. And back. Okay, so we traded pawns. Was that useful? Uh, uh. I don't know. Interesting comment from, 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 looks like an STD. Man, you need to change your name. E5 there and exchange white's black bishop. I don't know if E5 would exchange black's, white's black bishop. Let's rewind again, because he's living in the past. E5 there and exchange white's black bit. what, what, exchange white's black bishop. So he means this bishop. E5 there. Okay, so what about, people are commenting on this position, what about e5 and trade white's dark squared bishop? e5, bishop has to go, I think, could bishop sacrifice now? The knight's on it, so that's not very good. Bishop g3, take, take doesn't help. In fact, take's bad, knight could take, or pawn could take. Kind of like knight taking. Hmm. Interesting idea. E5 is interesting. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's good or not, but it's interesting. <clears throat> take, take, take. Bishop G5. And both sides traded pawns. White got a side pawn. Black got a center pawn. So black still looks good as if he can survive this attack. 
Oh, he's going for another pawn. This could be very dangerous. Very dangerous. Warning, 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 warning. Don't take that without carefully considering the consequences. Because now we've got an open file, and I'm, I'm moving my mouse here. What's on this file? Oh, 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 oh. A king. And not anybody's king. It's your king. And you just open that up. So now, rook d1, bishop has to move. And this is very, very, very dangerous. I don't like bishop takes g2. I think you're about to be dead. Why rook up? Why not rook over? Why not rook g1? Oh well. Trade for that knight. I guess I guess to save the knight, I guess maybe you saw that knight and I didn't. Okay, trade. Okay, are you dangerous? Are you in dangerous city? You need to trade everything, so trade bishops, right? Yeah, I think bishop takes bishop is important here. If queen takes, you can trade queens too and maybe survive. Yeah, you can. Bishop, queen, queen, pawn takes, g6, rooks double up. Oh, you're dead. Oh, it was so close to. <laughs> Instead of g6, what can you do? Because rooks are going to double and checkmate you on one move. Maybe f6. Get the king out of there. As soon as the king escapes, you're okay. <laughs> I think he needs to trade bishops. If pawn takes right away, f6. Maybe f6 is... Oh, it's so scary. He tries knight f6, but I think he's about to die. Rooks are coming in. Ooh, ooh. Oh, okay. A trade, kind of, except you're about to be mated. Oh, it looks so... Looks so scary. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not gone, guys. I'm just blowing my nose. If you saw last episode, then you will be very glad this episode is different. Because last episode, I just left the camera on, and I left the microphone on, and I just blew my nose in your face. So you probably appreciate this a lot more. It's kind of like what the Black King is experiencing. Imagine that this pawn right here is a whole bunch of chess wizards' snot, and it's right in his face. That's what's happening to Black's King, and that's what happened last episode, so I'm sure you appreciate me just disappearing and leaving you for a few moments. It's important. Okay. I think Black is completely decimated at this point. Move the Rook out of the way to make a little room for the King. Double the Rooks. Checkmate comes. Ooh, 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 ow. Doot. Doot. And Black resigns. F6, F5 instead of F6 was better? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, because why did you play F6 for one move? And then after getting ouch, then you just played f5 next. I mean, did you really need to just move it twice one space? What about f5 right away? Let's let's ask the computer. This is going to be cool. Um, continue from here. Um, play the machine. I've got these buttons right here. Don't even worry. Um, from this position, uh, and I want uh, black. Uh, go. F5. Okay. Jai Kai on as. Thanks for that recommendation. Now we're checkmated. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, we won his queen and lost our king. Good suggestion. That delayed checkmate by zero moves. Not too bad. Was this the game? No, we lost the game. Control Shift T. By the way, guys, that will undo close tab if you're on Windows. If you're on Mac, then you're weird. But if you're on Windows, then you can Control T for new tab and Control Shift T for undo close tab. And I'm not going to press it anymore. You'll see what I was browsing just before I came on air. That would be a national disaster. Okay, so what we saw in this game is the boulder attack, where, well, that's not quite the boulder attack. We took H6 and then didn't get taken. And then Black just kind of was like, well, free pawn, I'll take that free pawn. Yes, I'm ahead of pawn. And then he just totally got checkmated on that line. Great work, Chess was TV viewers. Great work. You both castled queenside as white. Put your rooks there. Move those pawns and won. Great. Are we going to see another game like that? Let's take a look at one that's a little bit, a little bit more difficult. Now, you're going to see something familiar about this game. Something very familiar. I'll let you guess what it is. Okay, e4 is kind of familiar. Oh, a new opening. This one's a French defense. Okay, that's not quite normal. Guys, I just have to show you this. Look at this. Okay, I'm switching views. I'm moving this. 
Do you see what it says right up here? <laughs> oh, we're playing the French defense normal variation. And I just said this isn't normal. Ding! Hey, that's cool. Why does it ding when I do that? Ding, 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 ding. That was cool. That's enough dings. So this is called the normal variation. It's probably named after Mr. Normal, who was probably not normal. Why would he come up with Bishop E7? Clearly he's not normal. But he is normal. Whoa! Mind blown! Okay. Whoa! This is not normal. Seriously. But you know what's going to happen. Queen d2 and castles queenside. Come on. What? <laughs> okay, this is the familiar part. It actually feels bad to me when I see that knight moving out there. I'm like, ouch. I'm sad and hurt and I'm uncomfortable right now when I see knight g5. Because my instinct, my chess instinct knows you're not done developing your pieces. Look at that queen on d1. Look at that king on e1. Have they moved? Well, they should have moved. And so when I see knight g5, I'm like, ouch, ouch, that's not feeling good. That feels bad. Ow. So I wouldn't do this, but the viewer would do it. And it turns out this player is the same guy who submitted the last game, who was just knight g5 on move 4, and then e6 blocked all threats, and the knight sat out there for the entire game. That's a lot like this, because it's the same guy. So this is actually a player who always plays knight g5 way too early. And so, player, if you're watching, stop playing knight g5 so early. You need to get your king and queen moved. Queen up, king castled, and then you can play knight g5. So I would have recommended queen d2, Castle queenside, and then you could decide: Do you want knight g5 or do you want h4? Because you could do either one, and you don't you don't have to commit right away. C5, h4. We're not wasting time. But what about castling? Is he just not even a castle? He's like, well, I guess I'm supposed to castle on the opposite side. But how about just checkmate instead? Take, take. Ooh. Some of you guys have seen this kind of position a lot. Because you're those crazy Sicilian players who love to give themselves backward pawns. There's actually a line in the Sicilian where it goes e4, c5, and then the d pawn trades for the c pawn, and then black says, oh, I love backwards pawns, and he plays e5 so that this pawn can never move and always is weak. And this is a lot like that position now. It's transposed from the normal variation. Okay. This game just got interesting. Mm -hmm. Instead of moving your valuable bishop out of danger, you left it where it could be taken by a pawn. That tells me you're going to win this game, otherwise you would never send it in. You would never say, oh, I would love to show Chesmus this game where I left my bishop in danger and then lost. So, hmm. Take. What a surprise. Black takes. Good. I'm glad to see that. I want to see these bad moves punished in the base. Oh, free pawn. Are you making the same mistake as our last player? He's like, oh, oh, look at that. A free pawn in the G file. But let me show you very closely. There's your free pawn. There's your king. Think twice before doing this, especially when you just took a free bishop. Because Black's doing really great here with his free bishop. Here, Black's doing really great with his free bishop and his king could be in danger. So why don't you go with step one and just finish your development? This knight has never moved. Why don't bring it out? and attack the queen at the same time. It has to move, and then you can bring something else out, like rookie one or rook eight, rookie eight or rook c8. Yeah, I like those more, more than just taking another free pawn. When you're ahead, you don't need more free things. You need trades and not getting attacked, and I think you're getting attacked here. F3, knight e5, castle's queenside. Good, obeying the rules, viewer. Glad to see that. What's going to happen? What's it going to be? It's going to be a checkmate on this file. So white is down a piece. He just left his bishop here. But I like his chances because as soon as he puts his rooks on this line, that king is a little scared. Take, take, take. <laughs> Who would you rather be here? Let's count the bit knights and bishops. Oh, extra knight for black. Let's count the pawns. Five to six. Extra pawn for black. That's four points, or should I say four points for black in the lead. I don't know. There are two open files straight across from his king. Knight has to, queen has to move. Queen f2, right? That's a good spot. Yep. Okay. Black knows he's going to have to get his queen off of this line, so move your queen. Okay. Who's going to win? I don't know. 
Black might be able to build a fortress here with pawn, pawn, maybe pawn, pawn, pawn this way. G6, H5 pawns, that's pretty sturdy. If black moves its knight now, he loses his queen, doesn't he? Okay, not anymore. So knight, well, the knight attacks the queen. So I don't think there's any, any such thing. Check, this was check. Now the queen's attacked, so if you rook g1 now, you could lose your queen. And then just save your queen, so I don't think so. Oh, what a brilliant sacrifice. Wait. Okay, this was about as brilliant as leaving your bishop on d4 so a pawn could take it. In my understanding of this position, you just gave your rook away for a pawn. Is this a good idea? Okay, here comes a checkmate, right? Check. Oh, check isn't the same as checkmate. I should have read that part. Is that checkmate coming? No. Let's do some analysis here. Is there a checkmate? Queen h8, check. King f7. Queen h5, check. King cannot go that way. King could go this way or back. Let's pretend back. Queen h8, check. Yes, I'm down a zillion points, and I checked him three times. King f7. Queen h5, check. Black says, I'm ahead a zillion points, so I need to survive. What else can he do? King e6. Queen f5, check. You got that in your head? King f7. Queen h5, check. Oh, we're back to the same position. King e6. Queen f5, check. King has to go to e7. Queen h5, check. Black has one more move. g6. g6. Queen h7, check. King e8. Uh oh. I don't think that white can get a perpetual, and I don't think that he can checkmate. I think he can lose. That's what he ought to do, because I think that g6 out to block the diagonal check, and then hide in g8 is actually going to make him win. Because if we count out the pieces, one rook for white and two for black, one knight for white and two for black, that's eight points! And then there's pawns as well, five pawns each. Well, I guess that's about even. So eight points ahead for black. Pretty serious business, so I don't know what white's going to do. Uh, well, <laughs> great, if you had a queen and then another queen, then one of your queens could guard f7, and the other one could checkmate. Wait, if, what if rooks could jump? Then rook h8 would almost be checkmate, except his rook could jump, and he would take you. I don't know. This is kind of wishful thinking. Knight d4. Max king can't move, so I guess you might as well move something else. Good. I like it. Ooh, have to be very careful. Another piece is in. Okay. So queen e8 offer a trade. That messes up this sequence. Queen h8 check, king out. Now queen h5 check. You got the perpetual now, because if he plays g6, he comes in this way. You can hide here on e6, though, and check down here. f5, maybe? Well, it gets weird. It gets weird. There's one move that black should not play. Do you guys see that? Well, besides leaving the queen there and just losing it. One queen move he should not play. And that is blocking his only escape square. Because if he blocks his only escape square, queen h8 is checkmate. But I think here's OK. And I think here's OK. And here's OK. I'm not sure. There could be some traps in the other lines. I still feel good for um, for black. What do you think black plays? That's right. It's fun day Monday. Checkmate. Oh, ouch. But now I want to ask for a computer analysis. Um, and I just did. See that? Computer analysis in project. Pro project. Computer analysis in project. And you can see all the moves going by. Whoa, there's a checkmate in there. Oh, castle's queen side. I saw that one. Oh, done already. Thank you. Okay, so now we get the orange squares. Check this out. Orange squares everywhere. Watch this. 95 orange squares for you. No wonder I felt bad. There should have been some orange squares. A castling king side is recommended. But why would you castle king side? Why not, why not castle queen side and just see what happens? G4, throwing away your pawn and losing your bishop. Mm. Orange squares on that bishop right there. What a shock. What a surprise. 95, some orange squares. Who cares about those? Do, 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 do. Queen e7, mistake. They'd liked in this position knight g6 to help with the defense. I really like that because it kind of blocks this up. White has no pawns here, which is good because he's got open files. Which is good because he's got open files right right there, these files right here. He's got those open files. Um, but it's bad because he can't drive anything away with his pawns. So 
when he's got a pawn, then he can use it as a as a lever, kind of just like here's a wall and here's a pawn that comes up, and it's like take your wall. Um, rough, rough an analogy here. This is pawns and walls, okay? And uh, uh, whatever. Uh, rook sacrifice blunder. Okay, I was right in thinking that. Now the analysis says black is ahead by four. Well, 3.59. That's interesting to me because he's actually ahead by eight points of material. But he's in such checkmate danger that it's only three and a half points of material. Is that material or not? F6? Better was F5. Hey, your, your kibitz was great, Jayana Kayana Nasa Sass. When you said F5 was better, you were just in the wrong game. Good thinking. Whoops. Oh, I hate it when I press the wrong key. F6. Queen h5, question mark, knight d5 was better. And there he plays it finally. Okay, so black is ahead by five points here, and it recommends queen e8, queen h7 check, king f7, and f4, and knight e2. So I was right in thinking there's nothing good here for white. Ouch. Well, I could say ouch. Uh, that was what we call a helpmate, where you actually say, hey opponent, I have this $20 bill in my pocket, and I could put it in your pocket if you play queen h7, and he's like, hmm. Queen h7, that's probably what happened, because that's that's like the only way this could happen. But it was pretty good, it's pretty good. Definitely glad we got that on air so that we could bring out the, the bribery. Don't want don't to have that covered up. Okay, so now we get a real Yugoslav, guys, because that last Yugoslav was not really a Yugoslav because we didn't trade. We didn't trade this pawn for this pawn soon enough. Actually, it's two games ago we failed a Yugoslav, and then this game was like the, the normal variation, and then it also became, almost, almost became a Yugoslav, and then the pawns got all weird with E5. So, this one, unfortunately, someone clicked the computer analysis button, so the orange squares are going to bombard us, so we're going to have to live with that. Because as you know, there will be a lot of them. Because it's Chess Wiz TV viewers playing. I mean, if this was Gary Kasparov playing against Anatoly Karpov, or maybe if it was Chigor and Hikor and Kar and Kurin against Zdemorjevic, then we wouldn't have any. Wait, is that a name? You should name every name with Vich, because that means you're a really good Russian player. Uh, they are on ended with Vich, except for Kasparovich. I bet he just shortened his name. It was really Kasparovich. Oh, it's a true Yugoslav. If you guys are Sicilian students, you know this is exactly the way it should be. There's only one thing that's wrong with this game, and you'll, you'll start to come to light as, as we play through it. At first, you think this is completely good and normal, uh, and then you'll realize it's not. I don't know about it. I, I don't know about this. I don't think so. Oh, and look, orange squares, orange squares tell me it's not also. I think it's bad because this isn't really very well protected in here. Take this knight. Uh, take this knight, and bishop has to take here right away, because otherwise the queen's doing two things at once. Uh, and then black has to take that, and then queen takes here. I guess that wasn't much. We'll see what happens. Oh, it's exactly as I said. Yeah, okay, player of the white pieces. I think you want to play f3 here. Actually, the computer's saying that. f3... And then you can play h4, h5. You don't have to play bishop h6 right away, although it's kind of cool if you do, because you're like, yes, my bishop is really close to your king. You don't have to do that. Um, because look how your steam just leaked out right now, and you're not even steamy. That was kind of sad. Bishop, This bishop is looking a little weird here, but it's probably just something I don't know about. Something cool that I don't know about. f4. Hmm. So I'm used to seeing pawns in this opening, because this is a real chess opening, with the pawn on f3 and then g4, h4. Because the f3 pawn protects e4 really well, so the knight can be free to get sacrificed. Because what happens is rook comes over here and just takes the knight. It's like, why did you trade a rook for a knight? I don't know. Exchange stacks are kind of common. And then it's also protecting the g4 pawn so that you can play g4. G4 is way harder in this position once you've played F4 because there's a lot of attackers on G4. So you might H3 G4, and that's way slower because your H3 pawn isn't out here like you want it. So that's why I like F3. I like my pawns like this, E4, F3, G4, H4, and then start attacking. But it takes a little time to move all those pawns, so everybody's different. I'm different. I'm totally different. E5. Computer recommends F5. Wouldn't that have been awesome if you played F5? It's like bishop pawn, 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 
pawn. This diagonal would be entirely pawns and bishops except for the square. That would be cool. E5. Interesting. We know there have been mistakes here because the computer analysis, which someone turned on for us, thank you so much, says black is ahead by, well, not a whole pawn, but part of a pawn. And that's not right because white moved first, so black should not be ahead. Uh, and computer analysis is always right. So we know there was a problem here. Oh, a queen trade? Uh, he passes up on the queen trade too. I think he should take that queen. Oh, look at that. Orange squares for you. You should have taken the queen. Uh, Cheswiz thinks so also. Cheswiz and the computer agree. So it says if you took the queen, you'd be ahead by half a pawn. But now white's ahead by half a pawn. Too bad for you. But this is not even an attacking game. I mean, what do we just do? Trade pawns at the center to open it up? Almost trade queens? Why is this even on air? Why are we wasting our time with this? To bishop e4. You should have played f5, says the computer. Dude, okay, finally g4. Oh, did I warn you? Look at that. Look at that. Hold on, I have got better buttons here. Ready? Look at that. Oh, I'm behind. What happened? Man, oh, look at that, Kay. You can't see me, but I'm pointing at that rook. I hate being behind chess. I should wish I were ahead of chess. But I'm behind. Sacrifice on f3. I've c3. I've I've told you guys this before in previous episode. Rooks are always training themselves for knights on c3 and f3. And it's just dumb of them. Why do rooks do that? I mean they totally get captured. I don't know what is going on. But he just lost the exchange. Oh, this is this is actually pretty cool for black. I mean he could take a2. I I really like queen takes a2 right now, actually. He could take g4. <laughs> Pick up a lot of pawns for that. Hmm. A2, okay, so B3 is forced. And then Rook C8 attacking the Queen, screwing through to here. Wait, there's also, yeah, the Queen has to move, and he has to keep it pinned, or this Bishop falls. Queen, if the Queen moves back, you know, Queen takes, King takes, and you win a Bishop, so Queen has to move up here. Oh, that's like an instant win. Almorn, can I give Link? Sure, I'll type in chat, sure. You can give Link to anything except Rick roll. Only I can do that. Nice try. Okay, so I really like queen takes a2 here, because if b3, then rook c8, and then queen moves, and then... Oh, it's not checking me. Well, I like it anyway. Bishop takes g4, rook d3, saving the rook. Oh, 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 there goes the a-pawn. And the computer's like, well, you should have moved this orange square to that orange square. Well, I like taking the a-pawn. Be quiet, computer. Bishop escapes. Uh, oh, 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 ouch, ouch. Something wrong. Something wrong. Chinese man join. His name's Something Wong. And I'll show you what it is. It's called a skewer. Ouch. Okay, guys. If you could see what I see, which is what the computer says about who's ahead, you would just want to cover your eyes because it's such a big number. It'd blow your mind. There is a 7.48 advantage for one of these players. And it's not for our Chess Whiz TV viewer. So we're going to go through the game kind of fast, the rest of the game. Are you ready? Whew. Glad we got that over with. Ouch, ouch, ouch. I mean, it was like, take that. Oh, take that. Oh, I forked your queen. Oh, I took your queen. Oh, now you're out. Oh, I skewered your rook. Oh, check. Oh, oh, checkmate. That was the game. I'm glad that took only 10 seconds because that would have been agonizing. Too bad. The player here was HB2007, one of our close friends. I appreciate you sending that in. That was fun to make fun of you. It was a good game. But let me just give you this one tip, HB2007, is to use F3 instead of F4, because, and then use your H-pawn, because that'll get your attack a little bit quicker. And you don't have to play Bishop H6 right away. You can hold off on that, because it's not forcing. I mean, it's not like your opponent is just checkmated because you play Bishop H6. So you could save it for the right moment. Um, and in the meantime, you can roll these pawns down a little bit further. But good game. It was fun. This was almost like a real game of chess, unlike the last ones we saw, which was just knight g5. Eh, 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 and it's just knight g5. I mean, that's all there was to it. Pretty much just knight g5. Okay. We just got a link in chat from the guy who said, can I send a link in chat? And I was like, yes. So he said, here, I'll send a link in chat. And he did. So we got to click this link. We don't have that much more time in the episode, but we've got to enjoy this link. So we are going there. What do we see? Um, thanks for the link. It's loading. 
that's such a cool loading uh, animation. Thanks for sending this to us. Yeah, I love watching this loading screen. It's loading forever, though. Hope that's okay with you guys. It never stops, but I'm just going to watch it. It's so mesmerizing. Whoa, how does it do that? Whoa. Whoa, it just finished. Oh, it loaded! Uh-oh, it's going to be like a video stream. Guys, I'm on the video stream. Please wait for the broadcast to begin, is what it says here behind the important part, which is Chess Whiz TV. No, don't start a broadcast. Oh, this is a game going on right now, isn't it? Al Morn says it's a three-move mate. <laughs> Why are you showing me fools, mate? Um, who are these people? Are they, like, fools? No, they have really hard names to pronounce, so they're really good. Why are you showing this to me? This is not castling on opposite sides of the board. This is the world's shortest checkmate that white can play. Okay, I'm playing it over and over. Oh, you guys can't see that very well. Well, I'll show you. I'll just tell you what's there. A uh, loading screen. It was this. It was totally this. Liechess.org slash players, boards, games, board editor. There. Now it's pretty close. It was this. Dude, 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 dude. Checkmate. And it's not even the world's fastest checkmate. It's not even because the fastest one. Where's the button? Watch the pieces. Watch this. Ready? Watch them slide. Wasn't that awesome? The fastest one is when white is as stupid as the, as the stupidest person in the world. Checkmate. It's only two moves to checkmate. Why are we wasting our time? Let's get back to the chess whiz TV, which is a big, big pawn storm. Here we go. This is not going to be a small pawn storm. This is going to be like a big lightning pawn storm. Here we go. E4, E5. Philidor's defense. This is always bad for black, by the way. If you play Philidor, stop playing Philidor's right now because it blocks in your own bishop. And it's passive. There's better things to do, like kill yourself. Well, not actually. I do not advocate killing yourself. But compared to Philidor's, it's it's kind of similar. Anyway. Good. Bringing out your pieces. Look, white has way more space. He has pieces more advanced. He has more pieces out. And he's better developed. C6? I mean, are you just trying to play really slowly? Shouldn't you? Uh, this is probably some Philidor expert who's like, I invented C6 and it's so good. C6 is probably some Grandmaster level move, so I should not cons insult it. Insult it. Now you're just, oh, oh, I don't like this check. I mean, black has things to do, namely bring out his pieces, and instead he sees a check, so he gives a check. Monkey sees a check, monkey gives a check. Monkey, check, blocked. You wasted your move on that check. He should instead take this bishop, probably, because it's a scary looking bishop, and then just bring something out, like, Bishop here, maybe. Oh, no, that's not safe. Knight here. It is tough. Why is it so tough? Because he played Philidors. Why did he... Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, he deserves this pain. Because he's moved... I mean, this is move 10, and he's moved one, two pieces. Two pieces after 10 moves. Okay, he has castle, so that counts as three. And he's moved one pawn that's kind of important, and one pawn that doesn't even matter. So that's like four important moves out of 10 moves. You're not, you're not doing well. Meanwhile, white has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven important moves, and one move that doesn't matter too much. Seven to four. White's way ahead in development, and this is going to hurt. Castle, queen side. Good. Destroy him with your pawns. This is going to be awesome. Come on. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so he's scared, so he plays king h8, but there's a problem with being scared and that he's not getting anything done. It's kind of like when you're scared about the lightning storm, so you just climb into a closet and close the door and then climb onto the shelf and then take one of the coats in the closet and put it over yourself. You're not getting a lot done with king h8. You need to be bringing these things out, so you're going to be hurting. h3. Oh, here come the pawns. Here they come. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, if I were black right now, I would definitely be getting into a closet and putting a coat over myself, because this is a scary-looking wall of pawns. Pawn fork is like the least of your problems. Oh, it's a pawn fork. I'll lose a bishop. No problem. I'm about to lose my king. Black could trade here, so he won't actually lose a bishop, but he will get checkmated. Oh, flee! Okay, so he's actually worried about the pawn fork, so he escapes it with climbing into a closet and putting a coat over himself. Seriously, guys, bring out your pieces. Have you noticed that this has not moved, and this has not moved, and this has not moved, and this has not moved? He needs to be more like moving those things. This is trouble. 
White, meanwhile, let's just count. Let's just, I mean, rub it into his face here. Let's just count how many useful moves each player has made. White, we'll count white first. One for castling, two for the queen, three, four, five, six for his four minor pieces, seven, eight, and I'm going to count this as one uh, because it's kind of like, it's just worth kind of, okay, one, ten, nine, nine, we'll say nine. Pretty good. Or 10 if you count h3 as a useful move. Rook's behind. This is going to be a careful, dangerous, dangerous attack. Okay, so that's 9 or 10 for white. Now let's count blacks. Uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, I guess. That's good. Uh, half. 1 and a half. 2. 3. He's definitely castled. Uh, I don't know if this counts. He's moved the knight four times, but it's back on the starting square. So, yeah. Is that four times, really? Rewind. Yes. Four times for the knight, and now this move. Oh, I gave it away. The next move is g5. So that's like four moves against nine moves. This is doom for black, even if you didn't even know it was on that position. If you had your eyes closed and someone said, hey, guys, imagine a chess position where white made nine useful moves and black made four useful moves. You would just be like, hmm, black's about to be checkmated. And you'd be right. It'd be exactly like this. Uh-oh. Uh, h4. I love it. This is not just like a pawn drizzle or a pawn raining. This is like a pawn downpour, a pawn earthquake. It's going to hurt. Okay. <laughs> Computer actually recommends taking this thing. Time to sacrifice pieces because uh, your development is so far ahead, but this is going to really hurt. Why do you have your knight on g8 and your king on h8? Have you ever seen that before? I never want to see it again. Bishop out. Oh no, you have to move your bishop again. Losing time, but it's all he can do. A trade, yes, take a trade, seriously. If you could trade everything on the board, there would just be kings left, and it would be a draw. So this is an important rule, guys. I don't know if I've told you this yet, but if you're under attack, trade pieces. It kind of neutralizes the attack. Calm down. Imagine these bishops gone a little bit better. Imagine the rooks off the board. You wish. This thing is never going to see the light of day. If the knights were gone, you wish. The knights have never moved. Black's really in trouble. But make some trades, it would improve. Okay, he got one trade. Unfortunately, that's probably the last trade he'll ever get. Uh oh, uh oh. There is a knight fork. Why play a knight fork when you can play a queen checkmate? So white just played queen g2, and the computer's like, why didn't you move your knight to this super awesome hole of a square and attack two major pieces at the same time? I don't know, I'm just going to checkmate him, that's all. Queen escapes! I guess I'll have to checkmate him. Oh, yes, knight in. Guys, this is called a hole. It's a square where no pawns can attack, and your knight can just move in there and cause major migraines. That's what's happening here. This is so, so painful for black. I'm just really glad that we're not looking at this position from the other side of the board where it's actually flip board and black pieces are on the bottom, because then my heart rate would be like, oh, I'm trapped in. I haven't moved anything. Uh, uh. But this way, I'm like, ah, this is good. My pieces are active. So I'm really glad that we're looking at this from White's perspective. Ready for a blunder? Blunder! Now this actually looks like you saved your rooks, so you're okay. But no, at this point, when you don't have anything out, then every move is a blunder. Okay, so here comes checkmate. Oh, yeah! I mean, most people would just trade pawns to open the file. But why not just own the man with your pawn? This rook's totally trapped now. It can't, it can't escape. It's like, oh, I'll escape a, a, what is he escaping? A frying pan. And now he's into the fire. Do you like that little analogy? Out of the frying pan? Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm proud of it. What happens? Rook back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I escaped the frying pan. Oh, oh, I'm back in the frying pan. Didn't work so well. So is now he going to take the rook, or is now he going to checkmate? Now he's going to checkmate. Ooh. Ouch. Okay, so knight under attack, and oh, this is so ouch. I mean, I can't imagine being black here. I would just want to reboot my computer and then defenestrate it. For those of you who don't know, to defenestrate something is to throw it out a window, and that's what I would do with my computer here. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Checkmate. Oh, he resigned. Good. We don't get to see the checkmate. Good, 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 good. Just don't look at that position anymore. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do not rewind and look at that position. You need to forget about it right now. It's so painful. It's pretty scarring. I don't want you to get the PTSD. Those letters are painful, so just don't look any more. Okay. That was some cool, that was some good Fun Day Monday on Tuesday. That was nice. What are we doing for next Fun Day Monday next week? Let me tell you. You think castling wrong is right. Let's get them pawns wrong. Next Fun Day Monday, here's what you got to do. Mess up your pawn structure. 
the worst you have ever seen. If you doubled your pawns, that's okay. If you tripled your pawns, now you're kind of qualifying for being on Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Chess with DV mode. If you quadrupled your pawns, time to send that thing in. Have you ever had four pawns on one file? Like a capture and then a capture and then a capture? Four pawns lined up? That's what I want to see. Seriously. Or I want to see the opponent doubling his pawns against your doubled pawns. Or I want to see pawn islands like, you know, bad ones. So if you if you don't know about pawn structure, look it up. Just go Wikipedia chess pawn structure. Read about what to do and then don't do it. Read about what you shouldn't do and then do that. I want to see some bad, bad pawns. Seriously. And if you win the game, that's a bonus. But if you lose, I'll just laugh. Be like, ha, ah, you lost because you messed up your pawns. That's because I told you to. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's Chess with TV. I mean, we just finished the episode. What happens next? Well, the broadcast schedule, as you can see right here, is right here. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So I'll see you guys on Thursday. In the meantime, if you liked what you saw, you can also find previous episodes on Chess TV. There's a couple more Funday Mondays on there. There's some lessons if you actually want to improve at chess instead of just laugh at other people. There's some good stuff. And that's everything. So I'll see you next time. Hold on. Let me get my cool overlay. See this? Oh, that's so cool, except it always says zero, 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 zero. I have to change this to say thanks for watching, because otherwise people who tune in right now are going to think that it's about to come on because it says zero, 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 and that's kind of wrong. So this is what I do instead. I take this, this notepad thing, cover it up, and I go like this. Notepad is the world's most useful program. All caps, thanks for watching. And then I switch back to me, and I say, this has been TV. Thanks for watching.